Okay then. Well. Back to it. Right. It's almost time, isn't it? Maybe we can free our friends after all. I have to help them. It's my fault this happened. Ah, let's go. Any luck finding my workstation out in the ruins? I found your data. Find the data and transfer it to your OSD. That's very good news indeed. Thank you. No problem. Who's there anyway? There's the least I can do. Well, I appreciate it. Here, you certainly earned this. Thanks again, Commander. Only three thousand. Uh, not to mention something else. Sorry. Okay. Armstrong Nebula. Okay. I think all that is just other stuff now. Going back to Zeus Hope now. Uh, that's the way out. Okay then. What the hell was that? I don't know what that plant does to people, but that's not human. Careful, leave the colonists. No hitting the colonists. Even if the Thorian makes them fire on us, that's what the gas grenades are for. Whatever you say, Commander. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. I need to arm them. Um. Come on. That one. Okay.
targeted complex, contact. Commander. Saves. Forty-four, three minutes ago. Oh, that'll be coming out the end of it. That's fine. I want to save as many as I can. I think wasted three at that point wasn't ideal. So let's try that again. No. What? Why? Sorry, but no. I should just let it go, but... Thank you. Not quick save here. Okay. Can I? 
can't, can you? That's annoying. Two left. There's two over there. Stop attacking me a minute. say they're all colonists. There's patrols in the Wait, 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 Get it. Let me get off of here. Good as new. <sighs> they seem to want to stay in place, which is annoying.
Hold the last one. Look. I'm trying to be in the combat too. Annoying. Right, we're not in combat anymore. There's a few people that do that in this game, or this series. Okay, so, what are we doing now? In here? I don't remember this last playthrough. We just need to find this creature now. and determine what it, what it, Kiba. What is that? That's a plant. That does not look like any plant I've ever seen. This may be. So I remember this bit. I just don't remember getting into this bit from last time. Invaders, your every step is a transgression. A thousand feelers appraise you as meat, but only to dig or decompose. I speak for the old growth as I did for Saren. You are within and before the Saurian. It commands that you be in awe. I'm here to make a deal. You gave something to Saren, something I need. Saren sought knowledge of those who are gone. The old growth listened to flesh for the first time in the long cycle. Trades were made. Then cold ones began killing the flesh that would tend the next cycle. Flesh barely given. The old growth sees the air you push as lies. It will listen no more. Let the colonists go. I won't let you keep your thralls. Release them. Now. No more will the Thorian listen to those that scurry. Your lives are short, but have gone on too long. Your blood will feed the ground in a new Realize I mean quick save the drawing. Two seconds, I need to shut the window.
Okay, moving on. We've got to hit those bits. I should probably switch to one of these for this. Maybe a pistol. Indeed it did. Oh, hi. No? Okay. Oh, yeah, because they come up from behind later on, don't they? Hi again. Tally, do something about this. Don't just like to let them wipe your face. Excuse me. Okay then. Think. Let's try something else. Oh yeah, that. Sure. Not my tally. Hold up though, hang on. Let me... Let's try that again. Again. I think it was actually this bit that I was most worried about, so... See, I guess.
got her down though. to watch this like 20 times. Is there anything I can... No. Proton rounds? Maybe less than that of a standard round. Try these. Wait. Now suddenly I've got better options? Oh, but the heat sink. Let's try this. Uh, I thought we had it. Now I'm gonna have to re upgrade as well, aren't I? Nah. Okay, hang on. Equipment. Uh, someone's told the. Let's try this again. We have cutscene time again. Me. She was killed. Mm. Okay, good. Can I F five after this cutscene so I didn't have to keep watching it? here. F5 
qualified here. No, I can't have both. No. Uh, hang on. Can I use Never mind I guess. being near them when they die. Okay, we good. Let's F5 that again. need to keep notice of the people nearest to you. Perfect. Wait. That's another one. Uh, shields. Clicked V. Game, please. Going backwards again is definitely a good idea. That's the only way I think it works.
as soon as she appears, I need to get with the uh, shields. Right. Come on. I have to walk into here, don't I? There she is. Whoa. Because she hit me with her shields thing. Right back a second. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Do I... I think I actually need to swap this back. No, this. 
Okay. This one. This one. Actually, up you go. No, 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 no. That's annoying, I didn't have any left. Oh no. Let's try that again. Oh, hi. Excuse me? Change the rounds I'm using. Chemical, proton, cryo. Mm. Tungsten. Let's try it.
there not any med things around here? Please let us save here. Okay. I didn't get to auto save there either, did I? Well, quick save even. Ooh. Where are we going?
Hold on, let me quick save that. Thank you. This is fine. This is doable, just slow. Please let me quick save at this point. Thank you. I'm not in combat at the moment, so you can let me save. God damn it, game, come on. Be fair. Overload. Never shot. <laughs> we'll get there.
all those times it's taken. Probably should have F5 first, you know. Too late to be regretting that. Oh, hi. Well, why? Why did it wait for me to be walking up the stairs and? Got to do this bit again. Awesome. Yeah. Shields. Mirror. Why though? Quick saved, thank you. Quick save here. Shadows, mirror shot. What? Why didn't that get her that time? Okay. Oh, did I already? Wakey wakey. Imagine if we could shoot these and they would die. Oh, shields. Oh, shot.
move back. So annoying. get out if I need to. Left just behind us. Of course, you get mid gel also by defeating. Mm, no. You move away quick and uh. Run up. Here. Run down. Right. You shields. You shot. Oh. No shot didn't want to work this time, but okay. Let me save.
Okay. Imagine there's probably one more lot to go. Aha, okay. Shields. And you're a shot. Save that again now. I suppose I should thank you for releasing me. Are you okay? Is everything all right? Are you hurt? I am fine, or I will be, in time. My name is Shiala. I serve, I, I served Matriarch Benezia. When she allied herself with Saren, so did I. Benezia foresaw the influence Saren would have. She joined him to guide him down a gentler path. But Saren is compelling. Benezia lost her way. So he tricked her? Are you saying Saren can control minds? Benezia underestimated Saren, as I did. We came to believe in his cause and his goals. The strength of his influence is troubling. She tried to manipulate Saren, but in the end, her plan backfired. And how is this possible? Asari matriarchs are among the most intelligent and powerful beings in the galaxy. How could one fall under Saren's control? Saren has a vessel, an enormous warship unlike anything I've ever seen. He calls it Sovereign. It can dominate the minds of his followers. They become indoctrinated to Saren's will. The process is subtle. It can take days, weeks, but in the end, it is absolute. I was a willing slave when Saren brought me to this world. He needed my biotics to communicate with the Thorian to learn its secrets. Saren offered me in trade. I was sacrificed to secure an alliance between Saren and the Thorian. Well, that's horrible. Saren's pretty quick to betray his own people. He was quick to betray the Thorian, too. After he had what he wanted, he ordered the Geth to destroy all evidence of its existence. Saren knows you are searching for the Conduit. He knows you are following his steps. He attacked the Thorian so you could not gain the Cypher. What does it do? What's the cipher? And why did Saren need it? The beacon on Eden Prime gave you visions. But the visions are unclear, confusing. They were meant for a Prothean mind. To truly comprehend them, you must think like a Prothean. You must understand their culture, their history, their very existence. 
The Thorian was here long before the Protheans built this city. It watched and studied them. When they died, it consumed them. They became a part of it. So the cipher is knowledge? So the Thorian taught Saren to think like a Prothean. How? The cipher is the very essence of being a Prothean. It cannot be described or explained. It would be like describing color to a creature without eyes. To understand, you must have access to endemic ancestral memory. A viewpoint spanning thousands of Prothean generations. I sensed this ancestral memory, the cipher, when I melded with the Thorian. Our identities merged, our minds intertwined. Such knowledge cannot be taught, it simply exists. Well, there has to be some way. I need that knowledge to stop Saren. There is a way. I can transfer the knowledge from my mind to yours, as I did with Saren. Try to relax, Commander. Slow, deep breaths. Let go of your physical shell. Reach out to grasp the threads that bind us, one to another. Every action sends ripples across the galaxy. Every idea must touch another mind to live. Each emotion must mark another's spirit. We are all connected. Every living being united in a single glorious existence. Open yourself to the universe, Commander. Embrace eternity. I have given you the cipher, just as it was given to Saren. The ancestral memories of the Protheans are part of you now. Are you alright, Shepard? What'd she do? Don't worry, I'll be fine. I saw... something. It still didn't make any sense. You have been given a great gift. The experience of an entire people. It will take time for your mind to process this information. You look a little queasy. We should get you back to the ship. I am sorry if you have suffered, but there was no other way. You needed the cipher. In time, it will help you understand the vision from the beacon. Uh, okay. Tell me more about this ship Saren has. Sovereign is alien. I do not know how it was built or where it comes from. Its design does not match that of any known space-faring species. It dwarfs any vessel in the Citadel or Alliance fleets. Its weapons are devastating. Its defenses virtually impenetrable. With it, Saren believes he is unstoppable. You said Saren uses it to manipulate his followers. The indoctrination. There is an energy about Sovereign. You feel drawn to the ship. It makes Saren's arguments more persuasive, more compelling. Spend enough time in Sovereign's presence, and you will lose yourself. There is no other way to explain it. I want to know more about Benezia. Benezia was greatly respected among our people. A powerful biotic, even for an Asari. She was widely known as a teacher of philosophy and religion. She always sought the paths of peace and harmony. She joined with Saren because she hoped to turn him away from his path of destruction. Instead, she became one of his most powerful allies. As I mentioned before, Matriarch Benezia underestimated Saren. Be sure you do not make the same mistake. What else can you tell me about Saren? There is little I could tell you that you do not already know. He's powerful, he's charismatic, and he is dangerous. Once I followed him, blind to his true nature. But now I see he's leading the galaxy into an age of darkness and suffering. I want to know more about you. There is nothing remarkable about me. 
I was merely one of Matriarch Benezia's disciples. For nearly two centuries, I followed her, learning at her feet. When Benezia revealed her plan to join Saren, she gave her disciples a choice. Only those who were willing had to follow her. Many felt her plan was too dangerous, but I believed in her. I thought she could turn Saren away from his insanity. Instead, we joined him in it. Now that you're free of the Thorian, what are you planning to do next? If you allow it, I would like to stay here with the colonists. They have suffered greatly, and I played a role in their suffering. I would like to make amends. That's a noble idea. The colonists will need all the help they can get. They'll be happy to have you on their side. Thank you, Commander. May fortune smile upon you. You did it. With the Thorian gone, we can start rebuilding for ourselves again. And we're free of Exogeny's threats. We're back to being just a little nowhere colony. Thank you, Commander. No problem at all. Okay, so we've done Ferris now. Okay. I need to go to the loo quickly, so be right back and then we'll carry on. Okay. Back to it. I hope Exogeny learned their lesson. Yeah, same. You are know the last time I did this, I managed to save one extra person. Start over. How can you get one leaving us alone? I hope Exogeny learned from this. Exogeny better fund us like they agreed to in the I hope everyone just leaves us in peace now. Be rough, but we'll make it. Good. Uh. I fought so hard, but any kind of my own. I will do what I can to assist the colony in this difficult time. I am ashamed of the damage done to the lives of these people. Farewell, Shiala. Farewell, Commander. I wish you well in your hunt. Thanks, I think I need it. Okay. I think we can go back now. Finally, that damn thing is out of my hand. I can think without pain. And with the power cells you brought, I can get this place up and running again. Thanks, Commander. No problem, Mai. 
me. Thank you for freeing us, no worries. Let me just double check that is everything here. Uh, Maroon Sea Cluster. Armstrong Cluster. Earth's moon. Low view NC stuff. Okay. Guess we could do some extras now. Yo, Normandy, we're back, finally. It's like a quick save, just to make sure we've got a save. Proper save when we get Stand in. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Commander, you look pale. Are you suffering any ill effects from the cipher? The cipher shook me up a bit. I might be able to help you. I am an expert on the Protheans. If I join my consciousness to yours, maybe we can make some. Doing sense this again. Go ahead. Do it. Hurry. We don't have much time. Relax, Commander. Embrace eternity. She was just taking the hour of us in the first place. All my research, yet I, I never dreamed. I am sorry. The images were so vivid. I never imagined the experience would be so intense. intense. You are remarkable. Back to the doctor again, the hour. What you have been through, what you have seen, would have destroyed a lesser mind. Did you see anything? The beacon on Eden Prime must have been badly damaged. Large parts of the vision are, are missing. The data transferred into the commander's mind is incomplete. So there's nothing useful. You sure you didn't come across any kind of clue or hint? Something we might have missed? Everything I saw, you already know. You were right about the Reapers. The Protheans were destroyed by a race of sentient machines. I think it is obvious there is a connection between the Reapers, the Prothean extinction, and the Conduit. But I did not see anything that would help us find it. So now what? What's our next move? I was able to interpret the data relayed through your vision, what was there at least, but something was missing. Saren must have the missing information. Maybe he found another beacon. If we can find the missing data from your vision, I can... I can... Oh, oh. I am sorry. The joining is exhausting. I should go to the medical bay and lie down for a moment. Are you okay? Dr. Chakwash should take a look at you. Chakwa. That will not be necessary. I just need some rest. Somewhere quiet. Uh, go ahead. We're done here. Dismissed. I sent off the Pharos report, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Yes, please. Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Commander, Exogeny should have told us about the Thorian. It would have made your job much easier. We might have been able to capture it for study instead of destroying it. Eh, it's better off this way. The Thorian liked to enslave minds. Anyone who studied it would have ended up as one of its thralls. Perhaps it's for the best, then. At least the colony was saved. Of course it was saved. Shepard would go to any lengths to help a human colony. <laughs> I help everyone. Being human had nothing to do with it. They were in trouble. Admirable. But sometimes Spectres have to make sacrifices. I hope you're willing to do that when the time comes. Goodbye, Commander. We will be waiting for your next report. Okay. We 
save, save game. Let's see what extra stuff we have to do then. Wait, no, I want to go talk to Tally. No, how do you get down there? This way. Also, I probably have a lot of points to spend. Still hunt up my charm. Six points required on pistols, okay. Um, medicine. Okay. Sniper rifles. Up that engineer. Okay. Uh, sure. Wait. Yo, Caden. I'm listening. I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is training people to aliens for some kind of lost knowledge. But we can't get backup from the council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. I hear you. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. And it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier is already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Uh, that's a cute way of looking at it. Well, well. You were romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid. Like the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves or justice. Maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. That's all right. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock to the kids they hauled in from brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Uh, you doubt it was accidental? Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics. A little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first gen subjects. Until then, they've relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Huh. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades, right on the termination shot outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform while I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle there to get together every night before lights out. 
We didn't have much to do, though. It was the research platform, and the Canadians kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Some time to talk, then. We must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart. Charming as hell. Beautiful. But not stuck up about it. Like you, I guess. Well. Oh. Did you love her? Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training. You know. Oh. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying uh -huh. they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Sounds rough. Go Jump on. Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the bits. This was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. Uh, I'm interested. I wanted to get to know you a little better. That's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well, you're welcome, Em. You uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? What do you think? No, no I don't. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that. Uh -huh. but, yeah, I'd like that. Anything you need, Commander? He's looking for some personal input. Trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. Well. What's your opinion on the last mission? I'm glad there aren't many aliens like the Thorian. I don't think my stomach could take it. Mm. One of my cousins has an agribusiness. I was thinking of calling him. Maybe we could get some shipments into Theros. I mean, now that they're cut off from the company. Oh, yeah. Well, goodbye. We'll talk later, Caden. I'd like that. Oh. Let's uh, grab that one. You can't actually go out there on this, this ship. I forget about that. Ooh. Take it all. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How well do you know the Lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special Oh, we've already listened to this. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. Goodbye. Goodbye, Commander. I'm actually thinking about romancing Liara rather than Caden. I think you can do Liara, right? Pretty sure you can, anyway. Hmm. Where is Liara? Is she down here? I know Tally's down here. Adam. Hey, Commander. You know that Quarian Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. Is she bothering you? I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. She's very useful. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Yeah. Just came to say hi, really. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. 
hook us inside our own hull. So we're invisible? There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. But by then we'd be gone anyway? Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight. But for short range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. Uh huh. Where else have you served, Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo, only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Oh, I bet. Do you like the Normandy? I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. She's the only one using the new Tantalus drive core. Drive core? What's so special about the Tantalus drive core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Mm-hmm. Carry then. on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Yo, Tally. Oh, hello, Shepard. You sound down. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? You mean it's too quiet to sleep? The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. Uh -huh. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just the silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. So you're homesick? Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You going back? You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Yeah, that's very true, very true. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. Okay. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Aha, uh -huh. the Conclave? That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Mm-hmm. 
Unfortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. You're democratic, then. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admirals. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. What about the pilgrimage? The pilgrimage? When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set off alone leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Do they always accept? Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Hmm. Well, let's change topic. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Uh, I'm going. I should go. Where is Liara on this ship? Is she in here? Rex, Ashley, Garrus. Make it. Oh, that's you. It's that guy. Uh, Ashley, Rex. Where's Liara? Uh -huh, I didn't know you could replenish your method jail, to be honest. Liara! Commander, are you coming to check up on me? I was worried. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. She's the best. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Uh-huh. I'd like to talk to you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Uh, you must get lonely. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes, I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes, I just need to get away from other people. Why is that? You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. 
matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Venezia. Uh huh. Well, that's not foolish. All children rebel against their parents. It's a natural part of growing up. Uh huh. You share the wisdom of the matriarch, Shepard. That is exactly what Venezia said when I told her of my decision. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. I'm that fascinating? Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! <laughs> I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> relax, relax, Calm relax. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Mm. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. No. Tell us about Benezia. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. You sound troubled. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. Uh-huh. Tell us about the Asari culture. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council. And we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Rumors? Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. How is that possible? I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term. Not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. Uh, what about the other parent? What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Who was your father? Do you know who Matriarch Venezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. She can do that. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered space flight and True. left our home world. <laughs> True. Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood, though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. 
Mm -hmm. It is possible Venezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Oh, you don't know that. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. Or something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Venezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Aww. How do they deal with that? Few Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Yeah. Nice. I should go. Goodbye, Liara. Goodbye, Shepard. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Nothing important. I just wanted to talk. Of course, Shepard. What did you want to talk about? I should go. Yeah. Goodbye, Shepard. Bye bye. Wait, no. Okay. Get on to the next mission then, I guess. Good timing, Commander. We got a transmission coming in from the Citadel. Of course we have. Clearance. From who? Is it the ambassador? It's not his signature. I think it's from the council. I'll patch it through to the comm room. Okay. Do I have Good to? Good Commander. We got a transmission. I'll take it in the comm room. I do. Commander Shepard. We've received information that may be critical to your mission against Sarah. Oh yeah, good. Tell me. I'll take all the help I can get. We've received an urgent message from one of our infiltration regiments in the Traverse. Infiltration units? You mean spies. Spectres tend to attract attention, Commander. But they are only one arm of the Council. Special task groups are often a better option for monitoring developing situations. We currently have several infiltration units scattered throughout the border regions of Citadel space. This particular unit was gathering intel on Saren. Well, that sounds serious. What did they find? Unfortunately, the message we received was little more than static. The infiltration team must be in a situation where they can't set up proper interstellar communications. But the message was sent on a channel reserved for mission critical communications. Whatever they were trying to tell us, we know it was important. Considering your interest in Saren, we thought you might want to investigate this find out what happened to our team. The signal originated from the planet Vermeer. Thanks for the info. I'll look into it. The Council prefers not to become involved in the specifics of Spectre activities. We only want you to be aware of all your options, including Vermeer. Good luck, Commander Shepard. We will keep you advised if we learn anything else. Thanks. Now can I get on with doing what I wanted to do? Yes, thank you. Let's save again. Also, my mouse has got very sensitive. Bye-bye, Ferris. Okay. Survey. The planet Shari displayed some strange readings while being scanned. Chief Engineer Antons pinpointed the source and located a strange object. Italian Adams brought it aboard and spent hours taking it apart. The purpose of the object is still uncertain, but it was Prothean in nature and contained Prothean data disk. Sweet. I'm not sure if I've checked these planets or not, so. Survey. Scan of the planet Quana have. Revealed deposits of cobalt. Awesome. Uh, I think I already checked Hercules, haven't I? Mm. 
I should actually check. Race against time. Okay. Nivaria, Vermeer. And that place. Okay, well, I want to do some assignments, so. Uh, Hydra system, Argos Road cluster. Argos Road. Yeah, I don't actually know where all the systems are. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander Shepard, my name is Nasana Dantius. I have a job for you. I can't stay anymore in an unsecured communication. Dantius. If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. I'll be waiting in the diplomat's lounge on the Presidium. Uh-huh. Scans of the planet can run... Revealed dangerous levels of radiation coming from orbit. Chief Engineer Adams conducted further scans and discovered the remains of an ancient warhead marked with the Parthia Colony insignia. Message coming in. Patching it through. This is a general distress call from the Sacred Angel Medical Transport. Critical system failure. Losing power. An emergency landing. Communications failing. Life support and emergency transponder. Won't last. Please hurry. Okay, well, we'll come back to this one in just a second. Check the rest of these planets. Survey. Scans from orbit have detected a large concentration of helium. Okay. Let's take Miara and Tally. Dangerous place. Uh, anomaly, transponder, debris. Okay, we're gonna go up here first. Don't fall down, don't fall down, don't fall down. One. Good. 
we can make it a painter, shouldn't we? Come on. While searching the wreckage, you found a very old letter stamped with the Gothis colony insignia. Unfortunately, the text is indecipherable. Okie dokie. And then... Kind of head this way and then we'll go to the debris. Oop. That flip. I don't think we're going to find anything of interest over here, are we? Okay. Mm. Right, we're going to go down. Right back a second.
Hey, right, sorry about that. I'm gonna check this corner for stuff before we go to the scrap. Whatever it was. What was it? Oh, we went there, so we're going here next. After coming down here. Thought there'd be something here. You've successfully feed a thingy a thingy. Now we're going here. This looks quite flat. There is the wreckage. I do not see any survivors. Careful, Shepard. I've got a bad feeling. Get! It's a trap! Huh. Heal up my shields. I think that's it. So 
basically, from what I gather, they are just wasting our time. They're making us come here. It then, isn't it? Some, uh, is that the one we just did? Fists illegal activities, would that be some barter system? done here. Let's save that. Probably should have checked for a natural thing that we need to do again. Let's go to the Citadel. Citadel Tower. Earth's Moon. Go Ludacrux Armstrong Nebula. Citadel. Right, we'll go back to the Citadel then.
Tally, Liara. Let's go. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Uh huh. Uh huh. Log. That's good. That's good. The commanding good. That's good. officer mm. is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Exo Presley has the deck. Rear Admiral Mihailovic, Fifth Fleet. This is a surprise. We weren't told to expect you, sir. I would have prepared a formal greeting. Spare me the pleasantries. I command the 63rd Scout Flotilla. You and the Normandy were slated for my unit after shakedown. And the Council got their paws, claws, tentacles, whatever. They got them on our ship and you. Think of it as an opportunity. I still serve the Alliance, sir. As a Spectre, I can advance our interests to the Council. Huh. You still know what color your blood is, Shepard? I don't begrudge the politician's decision to throw you to the Council. It's an opportunity. I do begrudge this over-designed piece of tin. <laughs> She's not over-designed. The Normandy is a fine ship, sir. She's jealous. She's served us well so far. It's a gimmick, Commander. Useless in a stand-up fight. This experiment diverted billions from our appropriations bills. For the same price, we could have had a heavy cruiser. Uh -huh. oh, we had to make nice to the Turians, throw money at a co-developed boondoggle. I'm here to make an inspection, Commander. Normandy is an Alliance warship. I intend to see she's up to snuff. Mm-hmm. Please do. We'd be honored to show her to you, Admiral. I'll just bet. Wait here. I won't be long. Commander, I'm not happy. Sorry? I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Who designed that CIC? Putting the commander aft of everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? <laughs> It's a Turian design. Modified Turian style. They prefer commanders looking over their subordinates rather than in the middle of them. We wanted to see how effectively they can command with that setup. Hmm. Reasonable goal, but they should have studied that in a lab rather than on a frontline warship. I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. Who realize we could make drive core? For twelve thousand fighters with that money, what and it does its job. Anyway? Useless. It's useful. We can loiter in an enemy system and monitor traffic, or drop infiltration teams on enemy worlds. Normandy could be more effective than the Solarian STG. Maybe, maybe, but that's not the job of a proper warship. We're supposed to find and kill the enemy fleet, not count how many times their garrison goes to the bathroom. And we need to talk about your crew, Commander Krogan. A sorry? Turians? What are you thinking, Commander? You can't allow alien nationals free access to Alliance equipment. Oh, yes, I can. Between Saren and the Geth, we have enough enemies out here. Treating other species with suspicion and distrust won't win hearts and minds. That assumes the hearts and minds are worth winning. That hasn't been proven yet. You have anything else to say, Commander? Any other justifications for the state of this vessel? <laughs> We need to build bridges. I think Normandy is a good ship, sir. Even if you disagree, you have to see that her joint construction and multiracial crew make the Alliance look better. Your job is to look good, Commander. The Alliance navies is to win wars. I'm not convinced Normandy isn't a waste of taxpayer money, but I am convinced that you believe otherwise, and that you'll use it to its best ability. I'll be submitting a report to the Joint Military Council. It will not be as... Negative as I planned. Uh huh. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. Rude. I never remember talking to this guy before, so. There we go, I guess. Also, rude talking about my assignment. After years of poor economic performance, Exogeny has announced that its research colony on Pharos is finally returning a profit. New discoveries and a dedicated colonization effort have finally paid off for Exogeny. Exogeny stock rose sharply with the announcement, with investors pleased at this surprising news. Mm -hmm. oh, Commander Shepard? Kalisa Benstein and Al Jelani, Westernland News. Would you answer a few questions for our viewers?
All right, then. What do you want to know? You've been given a unique position to represent our race. People want to get a sense of how you'll do that. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human Spectre? Uh, I'm honored. Spectres represent the best of every species in the galaxy. To be asked to join them is an honor. Some have said your appointment is the Citadel throwing humans a bone. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? Oh, the options appear on this side this time. Not like that. The Council is concerned with the needs of the whole galactic community. We're part of that community now. Our needs are on their agenda, but we're one of many. You really do believe that, don't you? You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? Uh, the Turians helped build it. Actually, the Normandy was co-developed by human and Turian engineers. Its design incorporates many innovations, all of which are classified, I'm afraid. So the Turians have knowledge of the Normandy that is being kept secret from the Alliance public? Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? Uh, the crew still Alliance. I wasn't aware it had been handed over to anyone. I'm in command, and last I checked, I'm human. Same goes for my crew. Human, yes, but you do work for the Citadel now, Commander. One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, well, he was behind Eden Prime. Saren instigated the attack on our colony at Eden Prime. Once his involvement was proven to the Council, I was assigned to bring him in. That's surprising, Commander. The official line says Eden Prime was attacked by rogue synthetics. Good luck in your mission. Thank you for your time, Commander Shepard. Thanks. Ugh. Don't like doing the news report stuff. Wait. Oh, is that... That was one of the things I needed to do, actually, wasn't it? Was it? I don't actually know now. Mm. Who is it I need to give the drive to? I feel like it must be someone. Uh, this requisitions officer. Hello, Commander. I need supplies. Show me what you got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thanks. Still too much money. Hmm. I suppose it's expensive for a reason, right? We'll be back another time, maybe. Let me check the map. Is there not a way to check all the maps? Docking bay, we'll go this way. In remembrance of Eden Prime, we present another profile in courage with serviceman Nirali Bhatia. A devoted wife and talented chef, serviceman Bhatia joined the Alliance military under the Deferred Education Plan. After finishing her service, Bhatia planned to open a restaurant. Instead, she gave her life protecting the colonists of Eden Prime. For more profiles in Courage, or to explore opportunities in the military, please visit the Alliance Military on the Extranet. Keyword, Courage. Right, show me a map. Avena, Nasana. Oh yes, Nasana. Another Ravina. 
for him. Nina. Okay, let's go up here then. I'm good, thanks, Avina. Should probably save. Nasana. Commander Shepard, I am Nasana Dantius. I see you got my message. You in trouble? It sounded like you needed some help. I do. My sister Dahlia is a crewman on a cargo vessel operating out beyond the fringes of the Traverse. Her uh, ship yeah. was attacked by privateers. There were no reported survivors. Well, that's not good. I'm sorry for your loss. This is where it gets complicated. Last week, I received a message with her voice on it. Dahlia is alive! The rest of the crew was killed, but she was taken prisoner. The slavers demanded a huge ransom from me in exchange for returning her unharmed. Uh huh. Why was your sister spared? Why didn't the raiders kill Dahlia along with everyone else? My sister probably told them who she was. My family's very wealthy, Shepard. They must have realized she was worth more to them alive. Huh. Well, you better pay it then. Coming up with the ransom seems like the best way to ensure Dahlia's safety. That's what I thought. I did what they wanted, transferred the funds to the account they specified, only they never released her. They haven't contacted me since. Uh -huh. I've made a terrible mistake, Shepard. I'm a diplomatic emissary. By law, I'm required to report any attempted extortion to CSEC immediately. But then do it. I was afraid for Dahlia, so I just paid the ransom. Now she's still missing, and if anyone finds out what I did, I could end up in jail. That's a stupid law. Why would they put you in jail? You're the victim here. Government representatives on the Citadel are not allowed to negotiate with terrorists. It's too dangerous. Paying a ransom would only encourage more kidnappings. I support the law in theory, but when I got the message, all I could think about was Dahlia's safety. I doubt they would actually send me to prison for what I did, but they would strip me of my post, and Dahlia would still be in the hands of the slavers. So you need my help? You want me to find her and bring her back? You only need to bring her back. I've already found her for you. I tracked the ransom payment through several accounts. Eventually, it led to a small mercenary band operating out of the Artemis Tau Cluster. Uh -huh. I need you to go to the Merc base, take them out, and bring my sister back. You shall be well rewarded. Mm, okay. Anything you can tell me about the Mercs who have your sister? Pretty much what you'd expect. Rough, dangerous, and well-armed. Nothing a Spectre cannot handle, though. Uh -huh. Can't you hire someone else to do this? I do not want to take chances with my sister's life. I need a specter. Besides, Fair enough. you operate outside official channels. My superiors cannot find out I never reported the ransom in the first place. How'd you find out who was behind the ransom? I have resources. Contacts and credits can go a long way. Especially if you're willing to bend the rules. I already broke the law when I paid the ransom. This couldn't make things any worse. I don't do this for payment. Keep your reward. I'll bring your sister back. I promise. Thank you, Shepard. I knew you were the right woman for the job. Come back and see me when the job is done. Uh-huh. Okay. Hmm. Something else in the Citadel. A reporter might be interested in SD container could make up a good story. Wasn't it her that I needed to give the thing to him? Would she still be down there? Didn't she walk off? Hmm. Off this town. Maroon C cluster. Armstrong cluster. Moon C cluster. Earth's moon. C 
Citadel Tower and inform the Admiral of their fate. Okay. So I need to find the reporter and I need to go to Citadel Towers. So where is it here? No, I'm waiting to speak. Commander Shepard, isn't it? My name is Admiral Kahoku. Is there something I can do for you? I need the guy that was moaning earlier about my ship. You sent a recon team out into the Artemis Tau cluster? Yes, that's right. They went missing a few days ago. I've been trying to find out what happened to them, but I keep getting the runaround from Alliance Brass. Do you know something about this, Commander? I'm sorry. I'm not sure how to tell you this, Admiral. Your men were killed by a thresher moth. A thresher moth? That's not... My men wouldn't just stumble into a thresher nest. Not the entire unit. Nah, it wasn't their fault. Somebody lured them there with an Alliance distress beacon. Placed it perfectly so they'd land right beside the thresher nest. Damn it. I had a bad feeling about this ever since my team disappeared. An Alliance beacon used as bait. My unit wiped out. And nobody seems to know anything about it. Commander, I appreciate what you did. Now I need to do my part. The families of those Marines deserve to know why they died. Can I help? Anything you need from me? Not right now, Shepard, but I'll let you know as soon as I find something out. Uh huh. So that should be that updated now. Uh, so it's just the reporter's request one. Where would the reporter be, though? Should we be back in the thing again? Hmm. I don't know if she would be or not. Let's try it. Embassies. Did I go to embassies? This was embassies. Okay. It, but we can check. Expat store. Doctor Michelle. Emily Wong. Ah. I'm Emily Wong. I'm a journalist investigating corruption on the Citadel. 
You recently took down a man named Fist, reportedly a member of some sort of organized crime ring. Did you find any evidence in his office? Is there anything you can share with me? Would these help? These OSDs might have the information you're looking for. <laughs> You've got Fist's files? This could be even bigger than I'd hoped. Here, Commander, for your trouble. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should go see what's on these discs. Uh huh. Do with one of those rapid transit things. I think there is one out here. Yeah. Uh, we can check the store while we're here, I guess. Hello, Earth Clan. No doubt you've just come back from the colonies. Will you Show me what you've got. Most excellent. I am sure you will find. I'm sure we will. Uh. Nah. Oh, we could sell Welcome some stuff though. Clan. Will you Show me what you've got. I should actually check my equipment first though. that. Uh, okay. Equip that. Ooh. Uh, I can't wear it yet because I don't think I've got the training for it. Welcome back, Earth Clan. Will you I think I'll be going. As you say, Earth Clan. Back to C sex so I can go back to the Normandy. With all this exploration of Prothean culture, this must be like a survey for you, Liara. Our travels now are somewhat different from my normal excavations. I would prefer lengthier studies and fewer explosions. Uh-huh. Yes, most of the technology I had hoped to bring back to the flotilla has subsequently attempted to kill us. Mm. And in we go. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. Okay, well we're going to save there and be done for this evening. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.